Charleston, eight and seven. Winners of six of their last eight. And again, a new era of basketball opens up tonight for the College of Charleston, their first ever game in the CAA Conference. And we are underway here from TD Arena in downtown Charleston. You're going to see a zone all night long, most likely from James Madison. Big guy Seminov at the top of a 3 2. He was worked on this, they knew it was coming. Cougars feel they can get some shots in the corners. They have to bring the back of the zone out or go inside from the corner. Willis Hall has it taken away. James Madison, we talked about the College of Charleston winning six of their last eight. The Dukes, after losing six straight, they won four of their last five. How about their schedule, guys? They've only played two home games all year. Yeah, it's been tough. Well, the good news for them is they got a lot more to play at home. And they won their first conference game at UNC one on Saturday night, so they're off to a great start. There's Charles Cook, and he hits the first basket of the night. Cook, the team's leading scorer, 16 points per game. Their bigs are basically screeners, and they have them coming off for handoffs. But they use the big guys to screen against smaller players. They want to switch to happen. Anthony Thomas is a key matchup guarding Cook. That time he went behind on the screen, and it was a three-point shot. Matt Brady, head coach for James Madison. Led the team for their first CAA championship in 19 years last season. In the sixth year now, the head coach for James Madison. Seminov in the top of the zone makes it tough because he's just hard to see over. He's a big guy. Here's the freshman of Memphis, Jonathan Burroughs Cook. Kicks it out to Anthony Madison. The three ties up the game. Exactly what they worked on yesterday in practice. Get in the middle of the zone because they have to honor you. Anybody in there can shoot it and then kick it out for open shots. They got to make them. Stitt made it. When you penetrate the zone, you shrink the zone, and that's when Cook went to Stitt for the wide open three. Willis Hall with rebound number one. We'll keep our eyes on his numbers tonight. Again, 26 points, 21 rebounds against Davidson, and then 18 and 17 on Saturday against Howard. Now the three-pointer by Anthony Stitt. Well, what the College of Charleston wants to do is get down the floor before the zone sets up. They're not going to play man in transition, but you get there quicker, you get them in a scramble situation, you get an open three. Stitt's been only shooting 25% from behind the arc, but he's on fire tonight. Seminov in the lane. Fadeaway jumper. Seminov, interesting story. He's actually a grad student. He has played parts of the last six seasons well, for James Madison due to injuries. When you're from St. Petersburg, Russia, you're born with that step back move. That's the Euro move. Three. Again. Uh, that zone better come out a little higher and tag Anthony Stitt because he's burning him. Well, Anthony Stitt's gone through shooting slumps in the past. I think he's out of it tonight. Three for three from deep. Cook bumps it low. Taylor Bessick with the best tip back by Lucas Longo. Get on the bounce to the college. Another call by Lucas on the James Madison. Charles with the 9 to 5 lead. If you're just tuning in, James Madison hit the first bucket, but then. Anthony Stitt for the College of Charleston with back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back threes. In the game for the first time for James Madison, Andre Nation. Playing for the first time, he was suspended for the first 15 games of the year for James Madison for violating athletic department policy, and was James Madison happy to get him back. He's a heck of a basketball player. He was unbelievable in their NCAA two games last year. In, in Northeastern in the championship game, he was really good, and then he had 24 against Indiana. So he can really play. Average about 10 a game last year. Just a real slasher, just a tough kid. The Northeastern beat LIU in the first round and went to the second round and lost to Indiana. They had a great year for winning the Colonial Championship. It's going to be interesting to see how he plays. The young man hasn't played since he played Indiana in the NCAAs last year. As you just said, didn't play in the first 15 games for his team. So. Could be great, could be rusty, we'll see. Yeah, Matt Brady was talking about him earlier this morning on a conference-wide 
a teleconference phone call, and he said, you know, he's not going to start. Colin Charles is going to get this thing by the freshman to make it 11 to 7. He said he's not going to start. He didn't want him to come back and think that everything was going to be fine sure. and he was going to start again. So he's going to ease him back in the lineup, but he said he will see significant time. Meanwhile, for the College of Charleston, their head coach, Doug Wojcik, in his second season. And what a phenomenal job he's done here at the College of Charleston. 32 wins already. And, of course, took the college all the way to the Southern Conference Championship game and lost to Davidson last year. Anthony Thomas is the ultimate slasher. When he drives to the basket, he eludes defenders, and he rises at the end. That was a high jump at the end of that play for the deuce. Missed the foul shot. Curry on the drive, stops, trapped underneath. Gets it out to Nation. Hesitated, but hits a three-pointer. And threes are raining in here for both teams. Well, just because Andre Nation hasn't played, he has practiced all year with the team, so it's not like he's just showing up. He's, their SID told me he's been practicing all year and playing very well. Willis Hall with an offensive rebound. Has it slapped away out of bounds. Well, guys, we've done a lot of games so far this season, and we've seen some slow starts. This one, not like that. Both teams have combined to go five for five from three-point range, and we got immediate timeout. 15-49 left to play in the first half. It's the opener here in the CAA tonight for James Madison of the College of Charleston Cougars on top early by one. guy right there singing your national anthem Darius Rucker Charleston area native singing the national anthem here inside TD Arena in downtown Charleston as we open up CAA play tonight here for the College of Charleston for James Madison they've actually already started CAA play they got a win the other night against UNC Wilmington on the road nice win for the Dukes as they won it 60 to 55. Well, they're used to playing on the road they've only played a couple home games so far so that's a good win to start the season today. Coach Healy makes it a three-point play, and the College of Charleston has a two-point lead. We've already had five different lead changes in this one as the Cougars run top by two. Healy did a great job against Howard Saturday, coming off the bench for 11 points and three assists. He's a 6'3 guard who can finish around the basket, and he can also find people because of his size when he drives to the hoop. Very valuable guard and a great rookie. Cook from the top, can't bank it in. Willis Hall tipped it, and he grabs it, ripping it away from Johanny Dallenbear into the game here for James Madison. If you're fighting Lewis, uh, Willis Hall for this ball, you're probably going to lose. He's going to get most of it. Great block by Nation there, just keeps going to the rack. Oh, a big time block by Anthony Thomas on the drive to the hoop by Nation. Both blocks. Nation went straight up, straight down on his end, and then Anthony Thomas just waited and blocked the shot and kept it in play. Two great defensive plays back to back. Watch this. Not in my house. Cook inbounds for the Dukes. First shot attempt Nation has not made. Curry. Good looking shot, a little bit too long though, and Willis Hall with another rebound. He has five rebounds already here tonight. Man. Mismatch inside if they can get it to Maru. They got Ron Curry, 6 4 guard. Well, they switch it back. Down there's on him. And Thomas. Driving to the basket, knocks it in. College of Charleston now with their largest lead, 26-22. You know, last game we said when Anthony Thomas went to the rim, he kind of went a little lack lackadaisically. I'm sure he looked at that on film. He is going with authority tonight. He's two for two, and he takes it to the rack. Nation, good touch, just simply rolls out. Well, you never know by watching Andre Nation that he has not played yet this season. Absolutely correct. 
Theo Johnson down the baseline. It's a 28-22 lead for the college. You know, we talked about Anthony Thomas going aggressively. That's contagious, Coach. When one guy does it, everybody says, that's what I'm going to do. And so far, the Cougs have really attacked the rim. He took a page from Anthony Thomas, and Theo Johnson is a really good sophomore, very athletic from Sacramento, California, comes off the bench and gives the Cougars a lift. And with Canyon Barry's injury, different guys are getting opportunities. Theo tonight, other guys the other night. Got to take advantage. Next man up is the mantra. Nation will shake move. Put back by Talibear won't go in. Goes out of bounds. It's going to stay with the Dukes. Mentioned Karen Barry. He's out with a uh, right pinky. Had got a crack in it. So he's going to miss from two to four weeks. Sits on the bench now. Some of the celebrities on hand here tonight. Darius Rucker, Rick Barry, John the father Cress. of the father of <laughs> John uh, Cress Canyon is here. Barry. Bobby Cremens is here. John Cress is here. Oh, absolutely. I got a chance to coach Rick Barry for two years in the uh, pros in the ABA with the New York Nets. Greatest player I ever coached in my 38 years in this game. He could score. If you needed 30, he'd get 30, 40, every once in a while a 50. Seminov hits the shot for James Madison and a chance at a four-point play. I think he was just beyond the arc. So a three-pointer and a chance at a four-point play here for James Madison. Average here, right here a little thing. over 11 and a half a game. He's had 15 in his last two. Very capable outside. We saw what he did inside. Just a complete basketball player. He's played parts of six seasons in college. I think what is happening is that good offense is just beating good defense. Yeah. These are very good sets by both teams. The ball is moving. Teams are getting the shot they want with sharing the ball. It's more about giving than receiving in this game so far. 28-26, Charleston by two after the four-point play by Seminov. Seminov now with nine to lead the Dukes. It's Nori Johnson. Well, he's been valuable for the Cougars over the last four games. Ten for his last 18 from three. He's got one tonight. we got three guys watching him when he, when he got the ball. We're still scored over. They know where he wants to go. He went there before the double team came. Doug Wojcik has made it an emphasis with his team to get the ball down low to Baru much more often than they had in the first well, eight or ten games of the season. They really made the focus to try to get him the ball. And we've got a timeout. 7.48 left to play in the first half. Doug Wojcik here at home at TD Arena in his inaugural CAA game with the Cougars. Ajay Baru, big move underneath. College with a four-point lead. Forty-five seconds on the Dodge halftime show. Cougars like they want to get inside, but they're kind of forcing it into Peru. They got to spread it out and let him have some space to work inside. Guys in the purple shirts are worried about him. They're doubling, tripling. Three-pointer by Charles Cook and a big basket for James Madison now with 28 seconds left to play. That's a big one. This is a huge possession. You're up four. Coach Rojo wants everybody on the same page. Go up six. Go up seven. We'll see if they can get a bucket at the end. To build on the lead. 35-31, Charleston on top. They are six of 11 from three-point range. Meanwhile, for James Madison, they're not too shabby as well. Well, Charles Cook's the leading scorer coming in. We knew he's capable from all over the floor. He had 24 in his last game. He's still going from downtown. Now, JMU maybe go zone here if they do. Cougars like to play the call to play called jump. We'll see somebody jump if they call it for an alley -oop. They stay in man. I'm sure Coach Wegel will give them the opportunity. Either way, what are we going to run? But depending on what the defense is running. I'd like to get a shot with five seconds or less on that 24-second game clock now. So you can take the last shot, possible rebound, but give James Madison no opportunity to go down and score with this four-point lead. Yeah, it's man-to-man. No, it's not. It's 1-3-1. One, one. Excuse me. Quarters will be open, Mr. Norrie Johnson. Get ready. Ten seconds. Into the corner. I got to Chile. Five seconds. Stin with three seconds. Hits a three-pointer. Great pass. Pass up a moment for a great one, and Anthony Stitt stuck it. The college 
Charleston, seven three-pointers in the first half and a seven-point lead here as we go to the break. Well, Anthony Stitt now has 14 points. He's made four threes, and he has a lot of points for a point guard. He's a distributor, but he's a scorer tonight. Anthony Stitt with a game-high 14 points in the first half. The Dodge Halftime Show comes your way next. College of Charleston leads James Madison by seven. Tonight's broadcast is being brought to you by Charleston Steel and Metal, the Low Country's leader in metal recycling. Visit charlestonsteelandmetal.com and by East Cooper Medical Center, committed to being the premier healthcare facility in the community, East Cooper Medical Center. A six-point lead for the College of Charleston, 45 to 39, with 15:53 left to play. College of Charleston, 8 of 13 from three-point range. That is crowd tonight here from downtown Charleston. Jeff, that is the difference. Uh, 8 for 13. There are 30% uh, three-point shooting teams from behind the arc, and they've got eight, and James Madison only has four uh, threes. So that has been the difference so far. Charleston shooting with good form, good concentration, and good confidence. James Madison stays in the zone. They really spread out across the top of that court. And cover a lot of ground. Try to get him running one way and throw it against that flow to get an open shot. There it is. That's just what they did. Yep. From Anthony Thomas across the court to Norrie Johnson, as the defense flows, you go against that flow and room, they bump it. Exactly. Now, it's hard to do because it's hard to see that pass because they're so big across the top. Now they're going to go man out of bounds under. Well, on Dallin Bear. Usually, by playing zone, you foul less than you play man to man. But the Cougars going inside to Baroon Wishon have drawn some fouls. Good inside outside basketball. Double and triple team of Baroon. It's bothering him against his own. Hey, Johnson's three skips off the iron as Anthony Thomas tracks it down in the corner. Slashes in. Can't finish. James Madison with the rebound. Good shot. Curry quickly kicks it out. Cook hits the three. And here comes James Madison. Boy, Curry did a great job of getting into the lane, penetrating, having Charleston collapse their defense, and then hitting Cook for the wide open three in the left corner. Stitt trying to answer no good. Willis Hall offensive rebound, and still looking for his first basket of the night. Paul is a great offensive rebounder. He prepares early, he has a nose for the ball, and then position is what he's all about. He doesn't have great verticality, but he really gets in the right place for those offensive rebounds. Tremendous competitor. Foul was on to Jai Baru. That'll be his second for the College of Charleston. College of Charleston, eight three-pointers. James Madison with five. In the difference so far, James Madison, not as many, but still a decent percentage. It's going to be one on this end, and obviously for James Madison on the other end, because both teams are playing good offense. Who's going to stop the opponent? Nice move. Cook with a nice spin move on the baseline, makes it a one-point game now. Up and under for Charles Cook, the leading scorer. You can see the body language has changed for James Madison. They realize they're back in this puppy. College of Charleston led by as many as nine. Cook had great footwork on that move, posting up against Anthony Thomas. Great move that time. D'Alembert got up in Baru's face, but it didn't bother Ajay Baru that time. He's got to get used to it. Doug Wojcik, head coach for the College of Charleston, hoping for a foul on that one as well as the Cougars retake a three-point lead. Incidental contact. Incidental contact. It's a little rough. Got, he got bumped, but the referees watch the ball. You hit him with the body sometimes, they don't see it. Nation is now posting Murray Johnson. So Cook and Nation are starting to post the Charleston guards inside, and it's working. Drawing fouls and scoring some buckets. I think he's cramping up, too. And that's a, that might be a result of not playing a lot of minutes. Practicing, but it's a lot different in the game. And right when he hit the ground, you can see Nation grabbing that left calf. He's OK. He just cramped up a little bit. Hadn't played 15 games. Practicing's different. Yeah, he's grabbing that calf. He's yep. OK. Nation preseason all CAA and of course all CAA rookie team last year averaged over nine points per game. 
And Nate, you and I were talking before the game. He had a big game in the NCAA tournament last year. Yeah, 20, he's really hurting with the cramps. 24 points against Indiana. And if he has to sit, which it obviously looks like he might have to do. Yeah, he's got a sub sitting gonna for him. That's going to be a him. blow for JMU. You can see right when he let it go, his calf did not cooperate with the shot. More James Madison men's basketball coming up on CSS this year. Tune in Saturday as James Madison hosts Delaware at 4 p.m. Eastern. More importantly, visit, I'm sorry, go ahead. Visit CSS-sports.com for a complete schedule. Because Nation missed, he can't come out. So he's got to stay in the game, and he's really hurt. Now they're going to get a sub in for him. But he missed the shot. The play continued. <laughs> Jackson Kent's going to come in as Nation goes all the way to the end of the bench. He's sitting down. Trainer's just stretching him out. It's just a simple matter. Get some fluids in him and get the cramp out. Welcome back to regular season basketball. Coach Healy lost it out of bounds. James Madison basketball down by three with just over 13 minutes left to play in the game. Another substitution as Seminov will come back in. That man right there, they worked on this yesterday. They know it's a 3-2 zone. They worked on driving into the middle of it, but protecting the basketball because those arms are going to slap it loose and then find an open people because the zone's going to collapse. The freshman Joe Chile went in there, didn't protect the ball, slapped it off his leg. It's tough to ask a kid to go into three people and find an open man, but they did it. Doug Wojcik makes the last second substitution as Theo Johnson comes out. Anthony Thomas back in. James Madison chipping away. It was a seven-point lead at halftime. They've cut it to three, and they might cut it to one or two now as they go to the foul line again. They're drawing fouls against the Cougars. They're going inside more than outside now in the second half. Anthony Thomas thought he was going bay was going inside. He went baseline, was beat on the play, and then Ajay Vu comes over to help, and he got hammered. Charles Cook, 75% for the free throw line this season. 111 attempts now. He's made 82 of them. And he takes more than anybody because he's got the ball in his hands a lot now. When they play Andre Nation a lot more, he may not be taking as many shots or getting to the rim as much, but it gives him two prolific scorers from the backcourt. Cook makes one of two, and the lead is down to two for the College of Charleston. Shooting into the student section. The opponents will do that all season in TD Arena. That's a tough crowd to shoot into. Good crowd here for an opener at this beautiful TD Arena. What a place to play basketball. A showcase. Back in the 3-2 zone. Willis Hall stuck in the corner. Gets it away to Brew, who is triple team. Back to Willis. Too strong in the three. Stitt. In and out. Willis with the rebound. On the baseline. Reverse layup won't go in a foul. Willis Hall's not behind the jump shot. He will find a way to get to the rim. He got hammered that time. Going to go to the line for a couple. Great offensive rebound. Shot fake. Up and under and got fouled hard. I think it's the right turn. Kind of mentioned he has a style of a Larry Bird. Now he's not Larry Bird from the Boston Celtics. But uh, Willis Hall, who played football in high school, had scholarship offers to Elon and Duke, is a tough customer. He's a star's talent with a walk-on's work ethic. Eight rebounds for the young man, and two points if that goes, and it does. Yeah, his first two points of the night for Willis Hall, the Oscar Robertson Player of the Week this week, as voted on by United States Basketball Writers Association. He had 26 and 21 at Davidson last week, and, and then 18 and 17 against Howard here in this arena over the weekend. Semenov throws it up, no good, but a foul on the Cougars. It's not a mid-major award either. That's one player throughout college basketball, fifth one of the season in the five weeks, and Willis Hall won it. Semenov's tough. You just don't know where he's going. He throws up some crazy shots, but when you foul him, it works. Chance to cut into the four-point lead. Semenov, 69% from the free throw line. Substitution. Tom Badanovich back in the lineup for James Madison as Curry goes out. I like the James Madison recruiting budget. I mean, they go all over the world to get kids. Now, Semenov played high school basketball in Virginia, but still, they have a lot of kids from foreign countries. You got to pay to go over there and see him. Let's see Vodanovic, he's from New Zealand. Yep. 
Some James enough. Madison had Lefty Drysell coaching them for a while now. Lefty Drysell was one of the great recruiters when he was at Davidson and had top 10 teams. He would travel in a station wagon all over the country, didn't fly. But James Madison, I'm sure, flies now and uh, brings these uh, great players in. You need great talent to have a great team. Foul on Vodanovic underneath. Vodanovic, good size. There you see, 6'8", 220. And he's just a freshman. You know, until Andre Nation came back, Matt Brady had all freshmen on yep. his bench. It's tough. All freshmen in, what, two home games so far? Willis Hall just can't get it to go in tonight. Jackson Kent, one of the many freshmen on the squad for JMU. 49-46. Just under 12 minutes left to play. He can shoot those threes, Knox, and another one. He's tough. You almost got to force him to go back door and hope Baru can block it because he's such a quick release when he gets it from out there. Semenov ties the game at 49. Hanging in the zone. Spreading it out. Willis Hall had a great shot last time. He caught it right in the middle. Thomas, little floater. Gives the college the lead again. Anthony Thomas is a slasher. When you get in the middle of the zone, it's an eight-foot jump shot, and he stuck it. That's an excellent move. After some empty possessions, that was a big basket for the Cougars by Thomas on the drive. And a steal. Thomas leaves it for Chile. Well, he just couldn't find a shy brew for a layup. He was open. He just got banged into by a lot of purple jerseys. You're right. He was trying his hardest yeah. to try and find Brew, who was open there him. for a second. Slows things down. Goes to Stitt in the corner underneath to Brew. Again, doubled and triple team. Thomas lost in the air. Chile for three. It was good inside-outside basketball. The penetration led to a wide-open shot by Chile. Cougars not shooting well in the second half. Oh, James Madison turns it over again. That'll bring us to immediate timeout. So a couple of turnovers by the Dukes. And the College of Charleston able to retake the lead with 10.30 left to play here from downtown Charleston. The Cougars hanging on to a two-point lead. Tonight's out-of-town scoreboard is brought to you, as always, by real estate agent Pat Roghammer. Whether you already live in Charleston or you're looking to move to the area from out-of-town, make your next move with Pat Roghammer. Homes, land, or condos, you'll find exactly what you're looking for. Visit IWantToLiveInCharleston.com. This amount of town scores for you, Duke. A bad loss uh, about a week ago. They're on top of Georgia Tech, 53 to 46. You don't want to play Duke after they can beat. No. Wake Forest beat them. Tennessee with a big lead. Later on tonight, Vanderbilt in Alabama. And NC State against Notre Dame. You can't get used to saying NC State Notre Dame, a conference game. I know. Two players now with three fouls. Uh, Ron Curry for. James Madison is on the court. Willis Hall with three fouls for the Cougars. He's on the bench right now. Two-point lead for Charleston. Coming up on 10 minutes left to play. They go to Brew quickly. And a whistle underneath as he is fouled again. Seems like every time Brew touches the ball, he either scores or gets fouled. Well, he learns, he has learned, that the double keeps coming from the top side. So try to go baseline. And at times, he got bumped when he went underneath by Donovich, but he, he's going before the double team comes, which is smart, and he's going away from the double team. So he's learning where it's coming from and adjusting to it. Fouls are starting to mount now. James Madison with six and Charleston with five. So foul shooting will be very important in these last 10 minutes. It's tough, Anthony. Stitches can't see over these three guards. They're just so big. And then they have Seminoff on one wing. He's 6'8". Same play going to Brew underneath. Lost just it. Yeah, just didn't catch it. in a good place, hit him right in the numbers. Nori trying to find something here for James Madison. And now a steal by Nori Johnson. One-on-one -on -one with Seminole. Count the basket and a foul. 
though he surged for the contact. It was a great steal by Corey Johnson in the backcourt. And when he got into the front court, he had great body control to draw the foul and to kiss it off the glass. Here's the play, Nate. Here's a young man that did not play in the first 12 games of the year. Did not score in the first 12, 12 games of the year. Seven did not plays. Last three games, 12, 11, and nine shooting the ball. And now he's playing defense. He's coming on as a senior for Coach Wojcik and Steph.